Hey, this is Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Clank Catacombs, the newest standalone version of a game that I have loved for a long, long time. Um, I played my first game of Clank Catacombs with a total of four players, plays up to four players, and the core difference of this game, if you aren't familiar with it, is that it, it well, Clank itself is a deck building game where you're moving a little meeple throughout a dungeon. And the core difference here is that that dungeon is not a board, it is a series of tiles. And I'll talk about these briefly in a second. My favorite mechanism, as it relates somewhat to these tiles, but it could have been on the original board anyway. In fact, it might be in one of the expansions for all I know, are these little tokens called lockpicks. You start the game with three lockpicks, and there are a few ways to get more lockpicks lock during the game. But lockpicks do two things that I think are really cool. Even the first thing is cool, but I like that they added the second layer of a reason to hang on to those lockpicks for later. The first reason for using a lockpick is that at certain points in the game, you're going to encounter a locked door. But now that I'm saying this, I think in the original Clank, there were locked doors and you could get, uh, you could buy a lockpick item. And if you had that, you could access any door. Instead, there are a limited number of lockpicks. And... Uh, for each player, as I said, you start with three. And if you encounter a locked door, you can move through that passage if you take one of your lock picks and place it on top of it. And from then on, that door is unlocked. I like this for a couple of reasons. One, I like that there are locked doors and so it makes that, that entrance seem super special. You can go this way and spend a lock pick or go this way and deal with two monsters. Maybe fight them, maybe lose two health um, or one or two health. So you have an interesting choice here, but I also really like the positive player interaction added by making this a permanent, permanently unlocked door for you and other players. So even though it's good for you in that moment, it's also really good for other players who maybe want to use that passage in the future. I really, really like that. So that by itself, I think is really cool, but they added, or not they, uh, Paul, the designer Paul Denon added an extra layer to it in that there are certain rooms in the game that offer... Uh, like essentially treasure chests. There's some that have treasure chests, some that have um, uh, libraries, and some that have prisons. I'll talk about prisons in a second. And this is another reason to use a lockpick. These are kind of first come first serve benefits where if you encounter say this treasure chest and you still have a lockpick, you can choose to place a lockpick over it um, which just says that no one else can do this. No one else can open the treasure chest because you've already opened it. And you open that treasure chest and you get a major secret, which is a powerful benefit in this game. The libraries operate very similar. Uh, similarly, same thing, lockpick needed. Um, and if you open up a library, then you get a, a secret tome, which is worth seven points at the end of the game. It's a card that you put in your deck. And last, there's a new element, the prisons. The prisons are essentially places in this dungeon where people are being kept. And people are represented by these tiles. There's a handy guy to tell you what they mean. And these tiles have a bevy of different bonuses on them. One-time bonuses, ongoing bonuses, points for end of the game, a bunch of different benefits that you can get from rescuing these people from the prisons. Again, you get these benefits if you are the player to get to this place and use a lockpick before any other player. There isn't a repeated thing that any other, there's not an unlimited number of, uh, of, of treasures in this treasure chest, for example. So I think adding that as a reason to maybe hold on to lockpicks instead of only using them as you walk through the passages is a really, really neat idea in the game. So let's talk about the tiles briefly too. Uh, I mean, the lockpicks are definitely my favorite mechanism in the game. The tiles, uh, I thought were a really clever addition for replayability. Um, but it also made me really appreciate the design of the boards in the original game and the, the amount of thought that went into putting different things in different places because these boards are really chaotic. Now, I really like the idea that uh, every board, every side of every board has two entrances and exits. So you have a lot of options whenever you discover a new tile in terms of how you decide to orient it. I think that's really cool. But the layout can end up all over the place. I think uh, this was the first game of Clank that I've ever played where... Almost everyone died. Three players died and didn't score at all. One player managed to get out because of the chaos of this board. And maybe a little bit because of how we managed our resources throughout the game, of course. There's a personal account accountability here. The other element, though, is that I found that some of the tiles are really memorable and that they focused on one specific thing and doing that thing in kind of an extravagant way. I'll give you some examples in a second. And then there's a whole stack of tiles that, while they're cleverly designed, they kind of feel like all the other tiles. Um, 
So the, the three tiles that I thought were particularly interesting are this tile. It's a ghost tile. It has two way shrines, which are places where you can put a token and then you score a number of, uh, you gain a number of gold or coins equal to the number of way shrines that have your tokens on them. So it's kind of a way shrine specific room. There's this room that has three gold in the middle. If you can go there, um, but really easy to get in, really hard to get back out. I think that's really, really clever. And last, there's this room, that just this health room that locks you into this crystal cavern if you go there. And there's also a ghost reveal on that tile. But these are what I'm talking about. These are really, really specific tiles that are particularly memorable. They could even have specific names to them. In fact, I think they may have getting names um, as, as you play the game. But, uh, and so I thought that was a good reminder to me as a designer that if you're gonna make uh, random tiles or random things in the game, they really, st the, it's important to make them really, really stand out. This isn't a criticism at all of the game. I, I really do appreciate all the design of the rest of these tiles, but it was just a good reminder of how to make a memorable moment in a game and make tiles stand out if you have a bunch of random tiles. Uh, yeah, that, that's the main thing I wanted to mention about the tiles there. I think that's it for the, the main things about Clank Catacombs that I wanted to mention here. But uh, yeah, maybe we can discuss it more in the comments if you, if you, have some thoughts down there as well about Clank, about Clank Catacombs, about about lock the lockpick system. If you can think of any other other games that use something like that, or this tile system and having really memorable tiles versus slightly more generic tiles that are still well designed but a little bit more generic. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.